Administration provision by way of Section 106 agreement. And the recommendation is therefore for permission subject to those um, contributions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, two speakers, uh, Mr Downey, the objector. something of an issue now was the simple all sorts of things but one of the main ones was the amount of lack of parking in the area I still feel having seen the plans on the website and here that the parking provided is still not adequate overall for the area and I still think it's going to it's going to lead to more or more on-street parking, devious on-street parking from the locals, which is going to overcrowd it mostly. And my point back then was that it would basically inhibit emergency vehicle access. That's one thing. And I know a couple of my neighbours have complained about that, having seen some fire engines trying to manoeuvre in the area. There's also as has been pointed out to me on the parking front, there's literally um, a note in the plans, in the minutes, that say uh, the amount of parking for the residential element and layout of the proposed parking would not comply with current standards. The actual plans admit that themselves, even though they go on to recommend it. Um, and again, there's, there's another extra bit here. I, I think, and having spoken with a couple of my neighbours as well back there, that there's still quite a hell of a lot of congestion in the area and that the proposed traffic lights that are mentioned are going to add to that. And on top of that, there was a section in the minutes that, I forget where it is, I think it's on page three, that admit that there's... Um, basically no on-street parking for the shops, so that's going to add more congestion to the area. Um, again, my sort of fourth point here is that there's going to be adding more overcrowding to the area. It's 24 flats, residential flats, um, which again, don't seem to have parking in those 60 spaces we've already seen. Um, and that's on top of the 54 flats still being built at the other end of Rawlinson Way. Um, again, that's going to add to the congestion and the overcrowding of the area. And as a final point, I've got to admit I saw the letter from Taylor Wimpy. Um, I think I've still got it in my bag over there. It was copied from the site, the council put it up, where they basically say that they, they want some cheaper offices. I can understand that. But also, can, I, can, can I ask you to wind up? Yes, this is my last point. Um, their one final point was that they would pull out of Brentwood if this didn't get built. I don't know what anybody else would yeah, do right, yeah. with that bullying, basically. Okay, right. Okay, thank you. Right, Mr. Ed Henson, the agent, please. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'll try and keep this brief. My name is Ed Hanson, and as you know, I act on behalf of Taylor Wimpy uh, East London. I'm a qualified planning consultant and work for Barton Wilmore Planning. Um, as you've heard from the case officer, the um, history to the site, uh, there's previous permissions there in place going back to 2005, and a Section 73 application was approved this time last year uh, at committee, which extended. Um, the uh, condition 10 of the original application to enable Taylor Wimpy to uh, build the office development within three years. Um, the current application has been um, presented to officers three times now for pre-application advice and at each time 
we've taken on board the comments from the design officers and the planning policy officers. And ultimately, we end up with the application in front of you today, which we think meets all of the objectives of the, uh, the policy and planning officers. So um, the current application seeks consent for a mixed-use development, as we've heard, and the proposal is wholly supported by officers. The size, height, and bulk of the building proposed would sit within the previously consented envelope and would not detract from the character or appearance of the local area. The building would not be overbearing and would not cause harm to the amenity of existing occupiers and adjacent properties. The highway officers consider that the proposals comply with the local plan policies, um, as we've heard, and in conclusion, it is the applicant's consideration that the merits of the proposals having regard to the policy requirements of the council are acceptable. So in summary, the proposed scheme promotes efficient use of land, promotes land uses which create jobs and can be implemented and delivered in a short to medium term, provide much needed affordable housing, promotes sustainable development, provides continuing provision of local job opportunities, provides appropriate levels of planning gain, would not necessarily, uh, not adversely impact on the surrounding landscape and would not have a harmful impact on existing highways or infrastructure. So on this basis, we consider that the application before you is acceptable and agree with the case officer and advice taken from your planning policy team. We therefore invite members to approve 